I'm Larry Anglosano reporting for Aviation Consumer Magazine. In a previous production we did last spring, we looked at the STEMI S10 motor glider. Now at the time the market was anxiously awaiting the release of the next generation motor glider from STEMI, it's the S12. Now as the company gets ready to start delivering those S12s this coming December, I'm down here at STEMI's USA headquarters in Columbia, South Carolina to fly the S12. Before I do that, STEMI's Wes Chumley is going to give us a brief overview. The STEMI S10 motor glider has been flying um, since the early 90s. Uh, it's a tremendous platform and a wonderful touring motor glider. Um, but over the years, the owners have expressed the desire for a number of improvements in creature comforts and so on and so forth. Um, when STEMI decided to come out with an increased performance aircraft, they incorporated all of those suggestions, or at least most of those suggestions, into the new S12. So not only is the S12 an evolution in performance, it's also an evolution over the S10 VT in comfort and utility. The S12, like the S10 VT, also uses a Rotax 914 turbocharged engine driven through a drive shaft from behind the pilot to a foldable propeller. The foldable propeller is what really makes this better than 50 to 1 glide ratio possible because once the engine shut down, the propeller is completely hidden behind the dome. In order to deploy the propeller, one just turns the key, the propeller blades come out with centrifugal force, and within four seconds, you go from a glider to an airplane. One of the improvements uh, that the S12 incorporates over the S10 VT is a wider landing gear stance. Of course, with a wider wing, you need a little bit wider landing gear, but the wider landing gear also makes the airplane significantly easier to handle on the ground than the S10 VT. Um, and if we pan around to the other aircraft, you'll see that the landing gear stance on the S10 VT is quite a bit narrower than the S12. One of the things that's really difficult to improve on over the S10 VT is the wing folding mechanism of the STEMI. The wing folding mechanism on the S12 is really identical to the S10 VT, so that even with the longer wings, it still only takes about 10 minutes to unfold the wings and be prepared for flight, or about 10 minutes to fold the wings to put them away, to put the aircraft away in a standard 40-foot T-hanger. Um, an 82-foot wing uh, introduces quite a bit of uh, adverse yaw, especially at low speeds. So, STEMI increased the size of the vertical stabilizer, both the width and the height and they also increase the area of the rudder. We have the Dynan D10A EFIS that uh, controls the AP74 Dynan autopilot that's installed in this aircraft. In addition to that, we also have the LXNAV LX9070 series glide computer, which is the top of the line glide computer in Europe and the United States. In this instrument panel, is not the final instrument panel for the S12. It's the prototype panel, so we have a Garmin 660 that's attached by a little stalk on the side of the glare shield. None of the production airplanes will have this kind of a setup. Everything will be installed in the instrument panel. In addition to changing the dimensions of the tail, STEMI also added water ballast in the tail to help, for, to help with CG control in the aircraft. The S10 VT did not have this, and often it's difficult to balance the airplane when there are two large pilots in the front. So STEMI added a very simple but very effective water ballast system to the tail. Just a matter of um, taping up the holes and filling it to the value that you want. Every liter represents one kilogram, and so the weight and balance sheet's very easy to calculate. So we're uh, fired up, taxiing off the ramp here. Now this aircraft is a, is a tail dragger, but it doesn't exactly feel like a tail dragger during a taxi. Uh, it really taxis very well. It's got a long tail boom and uh, steerable tail wheel, so it doesn't feel much like a traditional tail dragger. Okay, we're clear for takeoff out of uh, Columbia Metro here. Long runway, but what might we expect on a shorter runway for a takeoff uh, climb, climb performance? Oh, we'll, we'll do about a 600 foot ground roll and uh, and climb out between 550 and 750 feet a minute. And uh, we'll just hold it tail low and it'll uh, uh, levitate off the runway. Okay. So here we go. And we'll go to full power. And the airspeed's alive. We're making full power. I go to 115%. And there comes the tail. And we levitate off the runway. So we'll climb out at about 62 knots. 
continuous climb, uh, burning about 7.5 gallons an hour. That's about typical? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty typical. Um, we're moving at about 90 knots, so we're climbing at uh, 350 feet a minute and covering some ground at the same time. So we're through 1,000 feet, uh, fuel boost pump comes off. Let's talk a little bit about the fuel system in this airplane. Okay, so the fuel system in the S-12 holds about 31 gallons of fuel total, a little over 15 gallons in each wing. Uh, the fuel system has been redesigned since the S-10. Uh, instead of having the, each wing deliver fuel directly to the engine, they've incorporated a header tank. So now each wing feeds the header tank, and the header tank delivers fuel directly to the engine. We'll pull the power back to about 3,600 RPM. That'll slow us down uh, and also help cool. So we want the uh, cylinder head temperature and the oil temperature all to be below 100 degrees on the gauges before we shut down. Once we get to 55 knots, turning the engine off is as simple as switching the key to the off position. Then we'll pull the prop brake handle to slow the blade down. And once we've done that, we'll position it and we can close the nose down. I'm going to partially close the nose down. It will allow the nose dome to stay somewhat open just to cool the engine compartment for a couple of minutes. But we're now a glider. And you're welcome to maneuver the airplane. Best, best speed to fly in this mode is going to be about 70, about 65 to 70. Okay, and we'll we'll do some some sort of glider fun stuff that we enjoy doing with gliders. I'm Speed us up, and then we'll do a, a sort of a wing over here. So you can actually actually move the airplane around quite a bit. Boy, if you put a lot of aileron in, it requires a lot of rudder. If you put a little bit of aileron in, you still get a nice roll rate and not nearly so much rudder required. Now the flaps uh, are a little different than most power airplanes. You have both positive flap for landing and slow flight, but you also have negative flaps, which removes a lot of uh, drag from the wing at high speed and allows this aircraft to cruise at uh, 120 indicated or 140 true at 10,000 feet. Yesterday we were flying, we wanted to get under the clouds and try to work some lift. So we used the spoilers to descend at over 2,000 feet a minute. Uh, once we were under the clouds, you close the spoilers, everything goes back to normal, and uh, you're a glider again. What kind of rating do you need to fly this aircraft? Uh, you just need a glider rating uh, with a logbook endorsement for motor glider. Any CFI glider can sign that motor glider endorsement off, provided that they have a motor glider endorsement. Today's price on a brand new STEMI S12 fully equipped is $369,000 US dollars delivered in Columbia, South Carolina. Deliveries of new S12s will start in the United States uh, in December and then we have airplanes scheduled for delivery uh, through next summer into next fall. For a full report on the STEMI S12 motor glider, you can read the December 2016 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. For Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.